Good morning. Good morning. So today's going to be a little bit different. I'm going to be disputing false doctrine. And the one that's currently floating around more and more, um, people are preaching and teaching that Jesus is God, the father, that there's only one God and that God's name is Jesus. That's what they're teaching. Um, so my purpose to today is hopefully to help those who are believing in that to see the scriptures for themselves and not rely on somebody else's interpretation of scripture, which uh, scripture says in second uh, Peter, that there should be no interpretation of scripture. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started on what the Bible says. Uh, again, they're teaching that there's only one God and his, his name is Jesus and that there is no other God beside him. Um, that there's, I'm sorry, that there is no one beside him. Sorry. So meaning that there's only one and his name is Jesus. Okay. Now we're going to see what the Bible says. We're going to start off in Genesis chapter one, verse 26. And I'm going to try to keep this as simple and quick as possible. Uh, and hopefully this will give insight and scriptural knowledge to those who've been taught otherwise. Genesis chapter 1, 26, and it says, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So in this scripture here, this is God talking, and he's saying, let us, meaning there's more than one being that's like him, that he's speaking to. And he's saying, let us make man in our image. So this being that he's talking to is a being that's similar to him. OK, so from this scripture alone, we already know that there's more than one beside God that's there when the earth or when man is being created. We already know just from this scripture alone that there's more than one, more than one being just from reading this. OK, let's move forward. Let's see if we can find out who this other being is beside God. Let's go to Genesis chapter 3, verse 22. And it says, And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand, and take also of the tree of life, and eat, and live forever. Again, we have that word, us. So we all, from these two scriptures, we know that there's more than one being beside God. A being that has knowledge like God and a being that was there when he created man. And as a matter of fact, he said, let us create. So they're going to be doing it together. Bible says, let us create. So whoever this being is, is creating man with him. So it wasn't just God by himself. That, I'm just reading scripture. I'm just reading what scripture just said. Okay, let's move forward. And I, I apologize if I sound a bit abrupt, but when you have people out there who are supposed to be pastors and pastors for several decades preaching this stuff to people, it's, it's a pretty sad affair that they're not even going by scripture, but yet they tell you, oh, I'm going by scripture, but then they're not. All right, so here we go. Let's go to... Hebrews chapter one. Let's see if we can find out who that other being is. Hebrews chapter one. And it says, God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days 
spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. I, I think that answers the question who was there when he created the worlds. Uh, it says his Son, by his Son, by whom also he made the worlds. Let's, let's continue. Who being in the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Wow. So we got two beings here. Two beings. And one of those beings, being God, said he had his son with him, by whom he also made the world. Whom at this time when this was written, he's sitting at the right hand of God. So it didn't say that he's sitting on God's throne. He's saying he's sitting by the right hand of God. So that's two beings, two separate beings. Okay? So there, there should be no question. There should be no doubt at this point. I'm only going by what the scripture says. But yet people are preaching that there's only one God and his name is Jesus and there's no one beside him. Wrong. That's not what the Bible says. Moving forward. We're going to go on to uh, Colossians 1.15. And it says, um, actually, let's start at verse 12 so that we can read this in context so we know who's doing the talking. It says, giving thanks unto the Father, with which made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. In whom, speaking about Jesus, we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. This, this scripture is talking about Jesus, who is in the image of God. Didn't say he was God. He says that he is in the image of of the invisible God image. So again, this is not me interpreting scripture telling you, Oh no, no, no. See this, what the scripture is saying is it's meaning Jesus is God wrong, wrong. That's not what the scripture says. Scripture says that Jesus is in the image of the invisible God. Okay. We're going by scripture. We're not going by interpretation. Okay. So let's go to, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. And it says, For I know nothing by myself, yet I am not hereby justified. Oh, sorry, let me make sure I'm at second. Oh, sorry, I'm at the wrong Corinthians. I should be at 2 Corinthians. Do apologize. 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, and it says, In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Again, saying that Jesus is the image of God. Didn't say that he was God. He said he's the image of God. Let's move forward. Hebrews, and we're going to go back to Hebrews chapter 1, and we're going to finish it off where we left off. We left off at Hebrews 3, so now we're going to read Hebrews 1, uh, 4 through 10. And it says, and again, this is God talking about his son, so, so we know the context. This is God talking about his son. 
starting in verse 4. Being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance a obtained a more excellent name than they. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee, and again I will be to him a father, and he shall be to, to me a son. Which of the angels did God ever say to the angels, By the way, you're my son. Uh, which of the angels did he say to them, um, I'm to be your father? I, I don't recall him saying that to any angel. Okay? And in verse 4, it's saying that about Jesus, that he was made better than the angels. That he obtained an, an inheritance in a more in a more excellent name than they, than those angels. So it's not saying that Jesus is an angel. No, no, not an angel. Um, but he's, I mean, he was made so much better than them. And let's move on to verse six. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, this is God, when he brings in the first begotten into the world and he saith, and, lo, and let all the angels of God worship him, let the angels worship him. So we know that God's, we know that Jesus is not an angel. We, well, we know that God's not an angel, but we also know that Jesus is not an angel either. Okay. Moving forward. And of the angels, he saith, who maketh his angel spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. So that's what his angels are. Angels are ministering spirits. But unto the son, he saith, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. So this is God speaking to his son. And he's saying unto his son, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Wow, that's pretty heavy. God is saying to his son, two beings here. God is saying to his son, O God, and gives him a scepter of righteousness and a kingdom and a kingdom. Let's move forward. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. See, here it specifically states that Jesus has a God. Now, we know that the supreme God, God the Father, he doesn't have a God. He's supreme. There's, there's no one above him. But it says right here, verse 9, even God, thy God, and he's speaking about his son. His son has a God. His son has a God. But yet you have people out there preaching that Jesus is the one and only God and that there's no one beside him. I'm going by what scripture says. Scripture says Jesus has a God. But we're going we're gonna to get other scriptures where Jesus says, it so, says the same thing with his own mouth. Let's move forward. And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth and the heavens and the works of thine hands. Wow. Verse 10 says, this is God, again, this is God speaking about his son. We're not changing context here. It's still God speaking about his son. And he's saying about his son. He says, in the beginning... Hast thou laid the foundation of the earth and the heavens are the work of thine hands. God saying right here that Jesus laid the foundations of the earth and the heavens are the work of his hands. This is scripture talking here. Okay, scripture. I'm reading scripture. Okay, so let's move forward. Let's look at some other scriptures. And let the scriptures do the talking. Ephesians chapter 3. And it says. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 9. Bible says. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. Which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God. Who created all things 
by Jesus Christ. Wow. Bible says it again. It says, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. By Jesus Christ. I'm not making this up. Bible says the who created all things by Jesus Christ. He you know, by his son. Okay. Let's go to Colossians 1. And start in verse. Excuse me if I can get there. 16. And this is reiterating sort of kind of what I said earlier. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and in invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers or powers, excuse me, all things were created by him and for him. So if we go back to chapter um, verse 12, same chapter, sorry. Go back up to 112, uh, keeping it in the context, we're talking about God's and God's son. And if you move down, still keeping it in the context, I mean, read it for yourself, starting from verse 12, going on down to 16, he's still talking about his son. For by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. All right. And well, actually, we can read down through through verse 20, uh, starting back at 17. And it says, and he is before all things and by him, all things consist. Still talking about Jesus. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell, and having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. Again, again this is speaking about Jesus. Let's forward on. Now we're going to actually hear from the voice of God and hear from the voice of Jesus, what they have to say. Let's start in John chapter 20, verse 17. Um, I do apologize, people. Yep, John 20, verse 17. And it says, Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father. But I go to my brethren and, and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father, and your Father, and to my God, and your God. Jesus has a God, y'all. He says this here with his own mouth. He has a God. Now, God the Father, he doesn't have a God. But Jesus, he has a God. God said it, and now Jesus is saying it. He has a God. Now, those that are preaching that Jesus is God the Father, they're contradicting what Jesus says out of his own mouth. Jesus has a God and he has a father. I mean, he says it over and over again, his father, his God, his father, his God. So who are you guys going to believe? Are you going to believe what Jesus says? Or are you going to believe what uh, Gino Jennings says? Okay, let's move forward. John chapter eight, verse 42. And it says, Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, 
but he sent me. So those that claim that Jesus is God and God is Jesus, Jesus specifically said right here that he didn't come of himself. Now, if he's God, then, then that means he sent himself. Point blank. Period. If Jesus is supposed to be God the Father, then Jesus sent himself. But scripture says, Jesus says with his own mouth, I came not of myself. It says, neither came I of myself, but he sent me. God sent him. So please stop confusing scripture and trying to interpret scripture. Just read it for what it says. Okay. And again, this is more directed towards those who are supposed to be leaders in the church now preaching doctrine other than what the scripture states. Okay. So, and, and really that's where all this frustration is coming from. And I'm like, I cannot believe, you know, these people are preaching this going totally against what scripture says, uh, totally against what Jesus says. Okay. Going with, going against what Jesus says and making him into something that he's not, he's not God, the father. In fact, he has a father and his father is called God. And he says so with his own mouth. Going forward, Luke chapter 22, verse 70. And it says, and they said, oh, excuse me, let me start that again. Then said they all, Art thou the Son of God? And he said unto them, Yes, ye say that, or excuse me, he says, Ye say that I am. They asked him, Are you the Son of God? And he says, Hey, you say that I am. Okay? Now he's already said it before himself that he's the Son of God. Now he's saying to the people that are questioning him, Hey, you said it. <laughs> you said it. Jesus didn't say anything other than him being the son of God. Not once, not once does he say, by the way, I am God. Not once. And if you can find just one scripture where Jesus says those magic words, I am God, then I believe it. I myself will believe it. And then I'll just mark the rest of it off to, A, I just misunderstood. I, I, A, I'll take it. If you can find one scripture. But thus far, none of these people who are preaching this false doctrine can find that one scripture where Jesus says out of his own mouth, I am God. Not one. All right, moving forward. Let's go to, let's see, Mark chapter 9, verse 7. And we're almost to the end here, people. And it says, And there was a cloud that ever overshadowed them. And a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son. Hear him. Now, we already know, reading earlier in the scripture, that this is God speaking, right? And, this, and God is saying that this is my son. So even if God's saying that Jesus is his son, are you going to call God a liar and say, no, 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 he's not really your son. Really, he's you. I mean, are you going to really accuse God of deception? Because pretty much that's what, you know, people who are preaching this false doctrine, that's what they're saying. They're saying, no, 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 really, Jesus is God. And yeah, even though he's telling you that he has a son, really, he don't have a son. It's really him. It's really him in the flesh. That's deceitfulness, people. And you're accusing God of deceitfulness. But reading from scripture, God said that that was his son. Okay. And I'm, I'm gonna, only going to go by what the scripture says. If the Bible says that God said that that was his son, then guess what? I'm going to believe that's his son and nothing else. Okay, let's move forward. Let's take a look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15.
And I so like how the Bible puts things because, I mean, it, it helps to leave no room for interpretation. But although people still continue to try, thankfully, God has created the Bible so that we can go back and say, no, 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 this is what God says. Not what you say, but this is what God says. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 24 through 28. And it says, then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God. This is talking about Jesus. Even the father when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. For he hath put all things under his feet. But when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be in all, that God may be all in all. Excuse me. Correction. Okay. So this is Jesus saying that after he has put everything under his feet, including death, that he's going to give it back. He's going to give the kingdom back to who? To his father, to God. Scripture says, verse 28, um, that he is subject unto the person or unto the being that put everything under his feet. He is subject to God, God all in all. Now, if Jesus is God the Father, well, we already know God the Father is subject to no one. But even Jesus says he's in subjection to somebody. He's in subject to the one that gave him the power, that gave him the authority. And who gave him that power? Who gave him that authority? God. Plain and simple. Uh, let, let's, let's look at some other scriptures. Okay. Let's let the Bible do the talking. John chapter 14, verse 28. And it says, Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away. And come again unto you. If you loved me, you would rejoice because I said I go unto my father. For my father is greater than I. Hello. Wake up time. Jesus said his father is greater than he. Now, if Jesus is God, if Jesus is God the father, then it wouldn't be that his father is greater than him. It would be his father is equal to him. Equal. Not greater. But Jesus specifically states that his father is greater than he. And yet people are out there preaching. Jesus is God the father. Jesus is the one and only true God. And there's nobody else beside him. That's false doctrine. We got to go by what the word says. And the word said, coming again out of Jesus' own, own mouth, he's saying that his father is greater than he is. Plain and simple, okay? And again, this is going by what, what the scripture says, not Geno Jennings. You got to go by what the Bible says, or you'll, you'll pretty much believe anything anybody throws at you, including false doctrine. All right, almost done. John chapter 17, verse 5. And it says, and again, this is Jesus speaking. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Boom, right there. He had glory with his father before the world was. Before the world even began, he had glory with his father. He says it right here with his own mouth. Okay? You can't mess that up. That's two beings. Okay? 
Two beings, not one and the same. If it was one and the same, he would not have had to say that I've had glory with my father. He would have said, I would have had glory as my father, <laughs> for I'm the one and the same. <laughs> but he didn't say that. He didn't say that. He said, I had glory with my father. That's two beings, people. Two beings. And you got to go by what scripture says. And again, not what somebody's preaching at you, trying to interpret scriptures to what they think it believes or what they think it believes. All right. Lastly, Revelations chapter one. Sorry, Revelations 22 verse one. Sorry. And it says, and he showed me a pure river of water of, of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. Now, this is talking about the new heaven, the new earth. And, and this is John describing his visions of what he sees. And you notice here, he's talking about the throne of God. And of the Lamb. That's two separate beings. Two separate beings, people. Throne of God and the throne of Lamb. Now, if Jesus is supposed to be God and God is supposed to be Jesus, you know, then it would just simply have said the throne of God and left it at that. Or just said the throne of the Lamb and left it at that. Or even said the throne of God, comma, the Lamb. But it didn't say that. It separated the two, the throne of God and of the Lamb. Chapter 21, Revelations 21, 22. Again, Revelations 21, 22. And it says, and I saw no temple therein for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. I think that pretty much hits it home. We're talking about the new heaven, the new earth. And it says, and I saw the temple therein for the Lord God Almighty and the lamb, which if you know your scripture, you know, the lamb is Jesus are the temple of it are plural more than one, two beings, two beings. So that's primarily the discussion today. Um, this was to combat false doctrine going on out there, stating that Jesus is God, the father, the one and only, and that there's nobody beside him. Um, uh, clearly, as I read in scripture, um, there's more than one being uh, that God has his son with him um, since the beginning of the creation of this world. In fact, Bible states that uh, Jesus helped God to create it. Plain and simple. I mean, that's what the word says. Uh, and that's what we have to go by, not false doctrine. So if you have any comments or questions, uh, by all means, I'm on Facebook. Uh, this is going to be on YouTube and Twitter. And hopefully to dispel some of those false teachings going out, um, going out there. Um, it, it's best to stick by the word. And if you don't know what something means, uh, just simply say you don't know. Don't try to interpret something as scriptural fact when it's not. All right. Y'all take care. <laughs>